This is mainland China, shown in red. On the northern boundary is Mongolia, a country not many people know about, shown in blue. Straddling the border between the two countries is the Gobi Desert, one of the driest deserts in the world. China is in an intense race against time to stop the advance of the Gobi Desert southwards as it threatens the whole country's well-being. It is a hard fight, but China has an insane plan to turn the desert into a verdant forest. What is China doing to prevent the spread of the Gobi Desert? Is it winning the war threatening its food supply? Join us in this video as we bring you the insane method China is using to turn its desert into green forest. The Gobi Desert, the largest in Asia and the fourth largest globally, stretches into modern-day China and Mongolia, expanding its harsh rocky terrain over 500,000 square miles. It lies in the heart of Asia's remotest area, between Siberia to the north and the Tibetan Plateau to the south, covering the southern third of Mongolia. Unlike the romanticized image of deserts with sweeping sand dunes, most of the landscape of the Gobi consists of rocky, hard-packed terrain, while the solid land underfoot made it easier to transverse the desert, catapulting the Gobi onto the scene of history as a viable trade route, there was only a tiny settled human occupation in the area until modern times. A clue to the historical perception of the Gobi as a barren region is found in its name, which comes from the Mongolian word for very large and dry. The Gobi is a rain shadow desert formed by the Himalaya range, preventing rain carrying clouds from reaching the Gobi. It is roughly crescent-shaped, lying between the Altai and Hangayan mountain ranges in the north and the Pei Mountains in the south. The eastern side of the desert is fringed by the Sinkayang region, a large basin extending towards Tibet's plateau. Towards the west of the Gobi lies the greater Kingan range. The Gobi is made up of several distinct ecological and geographic regions based on variations in climate and topography. It is most notable in history as part of the Great Mongol Empire, and as the location of several important cities along the Silk Road. The Gobi Desert is noted for its extreme temperature variation, with days commonly dipping from sweltering midday heat to freezing temperatures at night. During the winter, the Gobi Desert experiences extremely low temperatures not found in other surrounding areas of China and Mongolia. The reason for the cooler temperatures, like the formation of the sand dunes, is theorized to be the result of the strong winds that sweep across the plains of the Gobi Desert. Unstopped by any significant mountain formations, the winds add a chill to the temperature, making life in the winter Gobi Desert particularly difficult. While marked by temperatures rising towards 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the summer season is the rainy season for the Gobi Desert. The high temperatures bring with them the promise of rain, which is much needed for the inhabitants of the desert. While a welcome respite from the heat, the rains never last long enough, annually only dropping about 4 to 6 inches or 100 to 150 millimeters on the plains. The harsh environment of the Gobi has proven prohibitive throughout history to permanently settled communities, and little of the advanced civilizations of China trickled into the desert. Those who did transverse the rugged terrain in its early history were commonly traders. Deserts often have to be crossed to reach potential markets, and the Gobi Desert was no exception. Trade routes dotted the gravel landscape, connecting the cities of Kalgan, Suzhou, Hami, and Beijing for economic purposes. Another significant road connected Kuei Hua Cheng, Hami, and Baku, while another rang between Lanzhou and Hami. The problem with the Gobi Desert is that it is not content. It wants to spread, turning erstwhile arable land into arid desert. Currently, 27.4% of China is desertified land, affecting about 400 million people. Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region in northwestern China is deeply affected. It has been fighting desertification for over six decades. As of 2010, 57% of its territory, or 2.97 million hectares, had been affected by desertification. The encroaching deserts threatened to destroy farmland and bury villages, forcing people to abandon their homes. Since 2012, an $80 million World Bank finance project has been helping to control desertification, rehabilitate natural vegetation, and introduce other ecological protection measures in seven counties and cities in Ningxia. The 75,000 hectare Bajistan Forest, for example, located on the edge of a desert, had an annual rainfall of only 160 mm, but an evaporation rate of over 2,000 mm. Sand blown into the nearby Yellow River raised the riverbed and increased flood risk. Based on experience accumulated over the past six decades and site-specific conditions, a 1 plus 4 approach to restoring vegetation has been adopted. 
One means the use of a straw checkerboard to fix the send, which is the foundation, while four refers to planting in spring and autumn, supplemented by spot sowing, container seeding, and broadcast seeding in the rainy season. A 70% survival rate of planted materials has been achieved, and vegetation cover has been restored to 40%. This has effectively stopped the sand dunes from shifting. The approach has helped bring about 6,667 hectares of desert under control. In Yanchi County, which is also on the border of the desert, a once sandy area is now lush with trees, grass, and flowering shrubs, thanks to extensive straw checkerboards combined with a grazing ban. Yanchi is known for its tan sheep, which produce high-quality wool and tender mutton. But overgrazing was a primary cause of land degradation and desertification. Now the sheep are kept in corrals, farmers received subsidies for sheep sheds and benefited from improved roads and other basic infrastructure. Information campaigns were carried out to help farmers understand the need to keep their sheep off the degraded land. As a result, the forest cover has increased by 2% and the number of dusty days in a year has decreased by 11 days on average. Biodiversity is also improving. Some multi-year pasture grasses are reappearing, according to Chen Zhidong, a deputy director of Yanchi County Environment and Forestry Department. Zhongwei, another city bordering the desert, has long been under the threat of desertification. Its first attempt to control the sand goes back to the 1950s, when the Baotu Lanzhou Railway, China's first railway through the desert, was built nearby. Today, the scale of straw checkerboards in Zhongwei is impressive. It looks like a huge net covering a vast sea of sand, keeping the sand dunes in place. Meanwhile, making straw checkerboards is far from easy because it is labor-intensive work. Working in pairs, a woman lays the straw on the sand, and then a man presses the straw half into the sand with a spade. However, the invention of a portable tool has increased the survival rate by 20% while cutting the labor cost in half. Supported by the project, more than 21,333 hectares of the desert have been placed under this network of straw checkerboards, and 3,333 hectares of grass and shrubs have been planted, creating a barrier for the city and critical infrastructure, including the railway and highways, which would have disappeared under the sand. The city has a booming tourist industry, as visitors from all over China come to see and experience the desert. Meanwhile, local communities benefit from the additional jobs and sources of income the desertification control effort brings. For example, Wang Wenging, a farmer living in Jiatan village, grows desert chives and sells them to cities as far as Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. He said he has four greenhouses and makes an income of more than 100,000 yuan or about $15,000 a year. Another plant, the Karagana, a major sand-fixing shrub species that needs to be pruned regularly, is good fodder for sheep and goats. When chopped and fermented, it is very rich in protein. Zhao Yanji, the head of a local farmer's cooperative who runs a feedstock business, said his sheep breed more when they eat Karagana-based fodder. He sees a promising market in Karagana and plans to expand the production next year. Making straw checkerboards is a good job opportunity. Tang Ziming, Zhongwei's project management office head, said they had hired some 700 to 800 farmers to make straw checkerboards each day from May to August. They have paid a total salary of almost 70 million yuan and spent 16 million yuan buying straw from farmers in just six years. Some farmers even make a living on straw checkerboards. They work in Ningxia and other provinces such as Inner Mongolia, Shaanxi, Xinjiang, and Gansu. Zhongwei's sweet selenium-rich watermelon is a best-seller across the country and a major source of income for local farmers. However, the soil in the gravel-mulched watermelon field gets degraded after a few years of use. The project encouraged the farmers to switch to wolfberry and calcium fruit. Calcium fruit is a cherry-like, calcium-rich fruit that grows in dry, sandy soil. China has been successful enough in fighting the spread of the desert that its methods are now being duplicated across the world. Desertification is a global issue with profound implications worldwide for biodiversity, eco-safety, poverty eradication, socio-economic stability, and sustainable development. While fighting desertification, China shares its experience and good practices with other countries facing similar challenges. Every year, dozens of officials and technicians from other countries come to Ningxia to learn about local sand control and prevention. 
Bashir Daoud from the Meteorological Department of Jordan appreciated the opportunity to join the training program. He is happy to receive good information that he can use in his own country, which has the same climate as Ningxia. 53,000 hectares of desert have been brought under control in Ningxia alone. Vegetation coverage has reached over 30% in the project area with straw checkerboard and 60% in the shelter belt forests. It has contributed to improving the local environment and the protection of the key infrastructure in the neighborhood. Local people have also improved their lives by participating in the project. Overall, 3 million residents are expected to receive direct environmental benefits in the project areas. These improvements will also indirectly benefit many people living as far as Beijing and Tianjin, since project areas are located in a wind corridor that is a significant source of sandstorms affecting major parts of northern China. Let's hear what you think of China's effort to stop desertification in the comments section below.